There are many possible ways to build a post and purlin roof support system. The procedures demonstrated in this video have proven to be very serviceable as well as being quick to build and efficient to move. We will imagine a gable end roof that has a span of 5 meters and a 1 to 1 slope. The plate log will be as straight as possible and in place with a preliminary notch. The height of the plate log will be close to equal on all four corners of the building. Check the location of the center line on the top of the plate log and square the building. If reference marks were placed on the bottom log at the time the building was started, these marks can be extended to the top log and an accurate location found. Ideally, the plate log will be set out a very little at the top end, 15 millimeters, and a very little in from the center line at the large end. The length marks of the wall should match the center line on the gable end wall, and these intersection points should have diagonal measurements that are within 5 millimeters. If the diagonal measurements are not equal, some adjustment of the center lines should be possible. If your work up to this point has been kept under careful control, these points should be easily established. If there are any questions, check all the measurements. That's good. Okay, on 100. Snap a center line on the plate log and drop plumb lines from each end. Locate a height mark on each of these plumb lines that is equal distance from the foundation line. This height mark may be a little above or below the top of the plate log, as long as the slope line of the roof intersects the plate log and provides an adequate flat surface. If the plate log extends out from the wall for a long overhang, use a straight edge and a level to locate the height measurements. A transit or level set on top of the building can simplify this operation. The roof slope can be drawn on the log end either up on the wall or after the log has been removed from the wall. A template can be made to make this layout simpler. Cut the roof slope or pitch cut and replace the plate log. This cut may be done by a sawmill or by hand. Now lay out the cap log. The cap log will be located on the center line of the end wall and fitted over the plate log and upper floor joists, or it may be under the plate log. 
depending on the design requirements. Use a square notch or a lock notch. Most builders cut the roof slope on the end of the cap log. I feel this is incorrect and I always extend this log out to the top of the rafters to prevent the inevitable separation of the notch at the plate log. Putting the plate log on top of the cap log will also solve this problem. You will want to make a flat cut on the top of the cap log. This flat can be almost any height as long as it is sufficiently above the notch, let's say 100 millimeters. But the plate line that you snap on the cap log should be the same height as the line you located on the plate log. If this or any flat cut is to stop part way, make the end cuts first to avoid overcutting. Replace the cap log on the building and start work on the ridge and purlins. You might cut the cap log mortises on the ground. Our object then is to position the ridge and purlins at the specified height and location. If the span is 5 meters and the slope is 1 to 1, the top of the ridge will be 2.5 meters and the top of the purlins will be 1.25 meters. Because we have a flat on the top of the cap log, it is only necessary to determine the height of the post that will support the ridge or purlin. Uh, let's demonstrate this process with a post for the ridge log. Choose a suitable ridge log. A large straight log is the usual choice. Position this log on blocks with any bow up and snap a center line on the top. Draw the slope of the roof on the ends. The apex can be a little above or below the top of the log. Place a level reference line on each end, equal distance below the apex of the slope. This line can be at any height but an even number will be easier to remember, say 200 millimeters or 250 millimeters. Place lines and do the slope cuts. Then roll the log onto its side so that you can snap lines vertically down the length of the ridge for the reference height line. Turn the ridge log over so that the peak is down. Then snap a center line on the bottom of the log Use the plumb lines on the ends to ensure a vertical position. Locate the post centers on this center line and cut a flat across the log that will be 100 millimeters or 4 inches wide and the same length as the width of the post you choose for that location, perhaps 250 millimeters or 10 inches. Lay out and cut the mortise for the post, 100 by 100 millimeters, and on the center line. This mortise should be 100 millimeters deep. Prepare the post logs by flattening them on each side to a width that will be equal to the framing material plus the sheathing to be used, let's say 150 millimeters or 6 inches. The width of the post itself can be a random measurement make sure that the post is long enough. From center lines, 
Place a cut line around the top of the post about 100 millimeters from the end. Use the two squares to obtain an accurate layout. When the tenon has been cut and checked with the template, lift the post into a vertical position and enter the tenon into the mortise. Secure the post in a vertical position that is 90 degrees to the reference line. You can use a level to check the end center lines and a 3-4-5 triangle to position the side center line with the reference line. You may also use a plywood right angle triangle to hold the post in place. Scribe the post to the ridge log, then take the post down and cut out the segments indicated. See tape number 6 for additional details about cutting a post notch. Reposition the post and check the work. The post may be left uncut and a circular segment cut from the ridge instead. This would be a second choice for me. With the fitted post in place, Mark the width of the flats on the ridge log so that a plumb cut can be made for the gable end framing material. The slot will be the width of the framing material plus the thickness of the wall covering on each side. When the post has been fitted to your satisfaction, measure the length from the reference line and place an identifiable mark on the side of the post. This mark will be 2,500 millimeters, less the height of the reference line and less the height of the flat on the cap log above the plate line. 
If the reference line is 250 millimeters from the apex of the ridge and the flat on the cap log is 100 millimeters above the plate line, then the length of the post will be 2,500 millimeters less 350 millimeters or 2150 millimeters long. Cut the end of the post about 150 millimeters longer than this measurement to allow material for the bottom tenon. Lay out and cut this tenon the usual way and this post will be complete. You may wish to dado grooves on the flat side to make a better housing for the sheathing when the structure is finished. The post for the purlins will be treated in the same way, but instead of the apex of the log, you can dimension your height from the intersection of the center line and the slope line. The simple mortises on the top of the cap log can be cut on the building. Unless there are unusual circumstances, these three mortises will be positioned on the center line at the middle and quarter measurements along the cap log, much like the tie beam for a truss. This simple roof structure may now be put in place on the building. This is best accomplished with a crane or hydraulic lift truck. If you do not have access to either of these, there are a number of other devices or procedures that can be used. As each post is positioned, make sure that it is vertical and securely braced so that when the ridge or purlin is placed on it, it will not be in any danger of falling. Use slings or straps that are shackled to the lift hook so that there is no danger of losing the ridge piece. When this assembly is in its permanent position, the plate logs and cap logs will be drilled and drift pins driven into the next two rounds of logs. There are usually enough window and door locations along with the through bolts at the corners to meet the standard requirement of one fastening every two meters. So use these as much as possible. In preparation for the common rafters, nail a strip of wood, 1x4, to the top of the plate, purlin, and ridge logs that will lift the rafter the thickness of the ceiling material. This will greatly speed up and improve the quality of the ceiling application. Alternately, this step might be rabbited into the beam before it is put in place. This will be a little stronger but a lot more work.
Next, prepare the end of the cap log by cutting it flat on the sides with the step on the bottom to allow the soffit material to be entered. Common rafters of the design dimension are put in place. They may be notched over a cleat on the plate log or secured with metal nailing clips. These rafters should be pre-cut and the work will be easier if the rafter positions are marked on the beams before the ridge and purlins are hoisted onto the building. Leave the lower end of the rafter a little long so that it can be trimmed after all the rafters are in place. This will make a straighter eave line. Provide backing for the ceiling material at the gable end. Put one rafter on each side of the cap log and nail a 2x2 two two flush with the outside edge of these. You should have eave blocking between the rafters at the plate. The eave block should be a size smaller than the rafter to allow ventilation over the insulation. For example, a 2x10 rafter use a 2x8 eave block. Use an ink line to mark the ends of the rafters, then use an electric saw to make the plumb cut. Nail the eave board to this. Cut and fasten the barge boards at the ends, then nail your choice of decking. The decking may be 2x4 nailing strips for shakes, shingles, or metal roof, but the space from the end of the rafter to the plate log should be completely decked over. A great variety of materials can be utilized here. Your choice should be made at the design stage. Another board should be placed on the top edge of the barge board to cover the end of the decking. Flashing placed over this and then the roof itself. 